the cloud. Excellent, everyone. Welcome to the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, our Wednesday night midweek oasis service. My name is Paul, and I'll be your host tonight. We have a wonderful program planned for you. We have a terrific speaker, um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about her later. But it, in tribute, as we did in our meditation, we're remembering those that are members of our family that may have journeyed into another realm and uh, his name came up tonight. So in tribute to Richard, mm -hmm. practitioner Richard, he used to always start the meditation um, on Sunday mornings when he spoke with grand music and a, and a resounding, hello, church family. Good morning, church family. Mm -hmm. So I say hello to our church family. So what is our Wednesday night oasis? It's a place where we can be together as a community to be spiritually refreshed between Sundays. We present our Wednesday night service in what we call the OCSL version of satsang, which means we have a speaker for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we go into some form of discussion, and, and that's what we'll be doing tonight. But our sole intention is that you have the experience and that this gathering be informal, intimate and rich. So that's our intention. Our annual theme is Timeless Wisdom Evolutionary Vision and our monthly theme, and this is the last Wednesday night of the month. <clears throat> so we're going to breathe in the view. Um, that's the last of our Wednesday nights with this theme. We start a whole new theme next Wednesday night. So breathe in the view. If you're here joining us for the first time, you've obviously found our homepage. That's how you got in tonight. But you can sign up for our Village News newsletter. We welcome you and we would like to keep you informed of what's going on. Um, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, there's a banner to sign in with your email and sign up for the newsletter. And once a week, you'll get um, a nice little information email about all of the things happening at the center with all the links um, that for the things that we do in Zoom and in live stream. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Please note that if you've not already done it, that um, we are requesting that you mute your camera and your microphone so we can improve the quality of the transmission. And please stay tuned for special important announcements um, towards the end of the program tonight. And we will be reading our covenant letter as well at the end. So if you've been doing that on Sundays, we're also doing it on Wednesdays, as well as you're welcome to do it as often as you would like. You can get that covenant letter for our new senior minister um, or ministers. Um, by checking out the where everything lives at Oakland Center. And it's not in front of the gates. It's on the webpage, oaklandcsl.org. We have a wonderful speaker tonight. Her name is Susan Urquhart Brown. And her topic is gratitude beyond gifts. So I have some information. Now mm -hmm. I've already said that she's a practitioner and her name is Susan Urquhart Brown, but Susan, I found some information about you that I'm going to share with the group. And I am in, in, an, in an honest and sincere um, gratitude um, recognition of who you are in total. I found out some things. One, I know that she's owner and teacher of her own yoga studio and Jory Yoga in Oakland. But in my, in my looking up around her, I found out that she is a published international author of The Accidental Entrepreneur, 50 Things I Wish Someone Had Told Me About Starting a Business. And it's in several languages. So that makes it international. <laughs> she was also a 20 year business, had more than 20 years as a business owner of Career Steps 1, 2, 3 doing career counseling. She served as an adjunct instructor at Santa Clara University, UC Berkeley Extension, and JFK University. She also told me stories that, about when she was an elementary school teacher, a very, very, very heartwarming story 
about when one of her former students contacted her when they were all grown up and about how she, um, she had touched their life. Very, very a gratitude story. Also, did you know for three years, she was the columnist for San Francisco Chronicles Going Solo, where she um, talked about um, being an entrepreneur and helping people. She served as a member of the Board of Directors for Global Partners that does great work in Africa um, and with children. She's a co-facilitator with her husband, practitioner Christopher Brown of the local and international Power of Presence workshops and retreats. She's also a co-facilitator, also with Chris, facilitator with Christopher of Saturday Circle, a group of independent researchers who have met every month for over a decade. Now, that took a lot of oxygen. No wonder there's a climate change problem. But in addition to all of that, she's a proud and wonderful mother of the two most special human beings in the world that I know, her sons, Christian and Kevin, and she's a thrilled grandmother of two, Ethan and Sophia. And with the greatest of gratitude, Susan, I, I thank you for everything that you've done for me. You've been my personal advisor, you've been my friend, and you have adopted me as a member of, her, of your family. And I'm so eternally grateful to you. And it's my honor to introduce you tonight. What a resume. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn the program over to you, Susan. I'm going to ask you to open us up in prayer. Okay. And then we'll start doing your work on gratitude beyond gifts. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Paul. That was amazing. You're um, amazing. <laughs> Bless you, darling. I haven't heard all of that in one go round in quite a long time. But thank you for your research. So let's take a breath and go inside into that heart space, into that place. Uh, where the heart is connected with gratitude, acceptance, love, grace, all there is living in our very heart, at the beat of our heart, just breathing in, into this present moment, knowing that actually this is only the moment, the only moment there is, and each moment is uh, such a beautiful opportunity for life. So in gratitude for all that we have, all that has been given and all that is yet to come, I invite us to let go of any story that diminishes the brightness of our light and abide in the knowingness of how truly magnificent and wonderful each and every one of us are. And so it's with great gratitude and blessings that I now release this prayer into that loving law of life that only says, yes, yes, yes. And so it is. So I'm very happy to be here this evening. And um, I wanted to start with two gratitude quotes. Um, and then I'm going to tell a story about, even though I've done all those wonderful things, I do have the other side of me when perhaps I'm not quite so grateful about things that occur in my life. So the first quote is from Oprah, focusing on the one thing that you that you are grateful for increases the energy of gratitude and rises the joy inside you and i love this quote from byron katie not necessarily about gratitude but life life is the constant opportunity to wake up so the story i'm going to share with you tonight is an absolute example of a way for me to wake up and to um, see gifts and gratitude 
but perhaps it took me a little bit longer to see that. So um, some of you know, or maybe <clears throat> have seen me wandering around with a cast on my hand. And so that's the story I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, Christopher bought us electric bikes. And this was probably a good six months ago. And um, I have had a challenge of, of connecting with my, let's say, connecting confidently with my electric bike. And so in, in his wisdom, Christopher has taken me to many trails around uh, the Bay Area. And um, so I could practice. And I always say, well, can't we go to the same trail? that we went last week, because now I actually know it and I feel a little more comfortable. Oh, no, no, we have to try another trail. It's, this is gonna be a good one. This is really gonna be good. So we went to Lake Chabot and uh, we're doing really well because we were going on the paved part of the lake, around the lake, and then we came to a bridge and uh, we had to go across the bridge and we are on a dirt trail. One, I said, for sure, I looked up the hill. We're not going up that one because that hill is way too steep. He, and then this one, it looked like a really beautiful wide walking trail. So off we went. And um, one thing I should say about not being quite comfortable with my bike is that I don't, it's an electric bike. so I. I wasn't really changing the gears as often as I should. So this, this is a point of that helped what happened next. So we're going along and we go around this corner and it was an extreme, well, in my viewpoint, it probably wasn't that steep, but this really steep um, hill. So I'm putting on my now electric motor, you can, turn the motor on to get you up hills like that. So I was on full throttle, going up the hill, pedaling, going up the hill. And halfway up, I don't, to this day, I don't know what happened, but I had no more zip in my bike and I couldn't pedal anymore. And in that moment, I realized I didn't know how to get off the bike in that situation. So the only thing that I could do is put down one foot and hope I could catch the bike, but it's a really heavy bike. So boom, crash, wham, there I am. Christopher, by the way, is already up the hill and um, not there. And so there I am lying on the side of the track, not in my, in bleeding, scraped, and my hand really hurts because I fell right on my arm and my hand. I'll have to say though, um, that women will appreciate this, men too, but the only thought I had when I was falling off the bike was I can't break my nose, I can't break my nose. So I think that's why I landed so heavily on my arm and my hand to take that um, so I didn't do a face plant. So I was successful in that part, <laughs> but um, so there I was, Christopher wasn't there. And so people were coming by and saying, are you okay? I said, yes, I guess. And are you hurt? Yes. Um, and then uh, Christopher still wasn't there. So obviously this whole fall was his fault. Um, I just had to put that in because he got me on that trail. So, these three angels showed up and they actually stopped and came over and said, um, asked the same question. They said, do you need 911? And I said, no, because I'm, I think I can get up, but I can't the, in the position I'm in. So they came and got my bike up and then Christopher showed up and we walked up the hill. So I'm totally fine to walk up the hill. And we ended up in a campground. And so they gave me a place to sit. They gave me some water. They made sure I was okay. And then they went off on their hike. So that was such a beautiful demonstration of kindness 
that I really appreciated. And, um, but I wasn't seeing any gratitude in uh, what had just happened, <laughs> falling off the bike or seeing what gift might be in it. Um, so Christopher took off to try and get back to the car to come and pick me up. We were kind of in a remote area. So I had, he was gone for an hour. So I had time to reflect on uh, what was going on. And um, I started resisting everything. Like, why did this happen, hap happen to me? I know I was grateful that I wasn't hurt more, but um, you know, this was really inconvenient. And <laughs> so, um, I wanted to blame someone. So Christopher, of course, came immediately to mind, uh, being such a wonderful practitioner that I am, I had to find a, somebody to blame. And it was his not looking up the trails before we went on them. <laughs> so we do have an agreement now that we definitely check that out before we go on our bikes again. And by the way, I have been on my bike again, and I'm getting more friendly with it. But the thing is, um, when we got, so he picked me up. And in the meantime, I had time to reflect about the whole incident and um, called a friend, told her my symptoms, and I was looking at my hand. So my hand is all recuperated. And this is the finger that was fractured. And Paul, and uh, actually, could you put these uh, slide up, uh, Peter? So there is my cast. So I'm just putting that up because that was my nemesis for 25 days. Who's counting? And I had way more trouble with this than I thought possible. Although at the time I was sitting up there in the campground, I didn't know I was gonna end up with that cast. Um, so uh, anyway, I ended up going to the cast room, got an appointment and I said, oh, can I just come in and you see if it needs something? I said, no, you need to go to the cast room. It's actually called the cast room. So um, I wasn't looking forward to that. And uh, my doctor, the doctor came in and looked at my hand and he goes, oh, yes, this is fractured. Let's go to get and get the, um, the uh, x-ray. However, he had to take my wedding rings off first. And that was much harder than putting the cast on. Actually, the cast wasn't such a big deal, except to deal with it afterwards. So... Um, Fast forward, we're home and I'm tr still trying to see, I just couldn't get there, but I am gonna share with you the three learnings that I, I got from this uh, before we go into our, our rooms. But I was so surprised how much I fought this because it was so awkward. It had a big hump here and I couldn't do anything as hard to, brush teeth and luck, but the a blessing is this was my left hand and I'm right-handed. So I could, I could be grateful for that. So um, I just, when I came home with the cast, I couldn't imagine dealing with this thing for 25, 26 more days. And I'll have to admit it did not fly by. And um, I was a little bit of a baby about the whole thing. And I was still looking for the gifts. Well, um, I came up with a few gifts. And what I wanna share with you is, I came around to realizing that, of course, this, this was an injury. Um, and it was, I was lucky that that was all that happened in that fall. And I could certainly be grateful for that. And I was really a little bit upset with myself how I was fighting it, but that's where I was. 
So the reason I'm telling you this story is that I actually was able to come to some seeing of the gifts that I got from, from this, um, that first of all, it was going to heal and it's almost completely better. I just have a little bit more to go. And I really started thinking about the magnificence of our bodies and how they know how to heal. And as long as they're supported, in my case with a cast, and we let it be, then the healing happens. And the nature just knows what to do. And so I started flowing more in with what nature was doing. And as it ended up, I also had a birthday in October, at the end of October. So a certain gift I got was my cast off the day after my birthday. So how could I not be grateful at that time? So I want to share the three things I learned. Um, you don't miss it until it's gone. So I had no idea how wonderful my left hand was and everything that it did from, you know, helping to cook, opening things, you know, doing yoga, down dogs, I mean, all kinds of things. And to start being um, appreciative of not only my hand, but also the rest of my body that just does its thing. And it's amazing. So I'm very grateful for that. Also, here's the thing. Gratitude has to come through acceptance. So that was one of my big sharings. So that, uh, not sharing, but one of my big outcomes that I discovered to be grateful for. I'll share a couple more. But what I'd like to do is have you go in to uh, the first breakout room. And I'd like you to think of a time when you had something unpleasant happen. Uh, it could be anything. And that my story sort of resonated with you the way you dealt with it. And to talk to a partner about what that was and how you managed to find some gift in uh, this happening, or at least be grateful in some way, and come to some acceptance. But the first part is to really look at what, how did you deal with it at first? And it doesn't have to be an accident. It's just some, some unpleasant thing that's happened in your life that you absolutely could have done without, but there it was. And how did you handle it? So Peter, if you could take us into the breakout rooms and then you'll meet your wonderful partner. Okay, hold on. All I'm right. Getting, I'm getting there. I know we'll get there. Let's see. So be thinking of what you wanna share with your partner. <laughs> One or a couple things. I'm sure something will come up. Hey, are we back almost? So um, actually unmute because I'd like to hear if who would like to share about what you and your wonderful partner discovered. <clears throat> about gratitude and acceptance. When you're ready to share, we're gonna ask you to either raise your hand on the camera or use your okay. reaction button to raise your hand and Peter will recognize you. Okay. I will. Hi. Oh, Sharon, go Karen. ahead. Okay, thanks Peter. Mine's quick. Um, my partner and I both said the same thing, that we went through a couple of really difficult things in our lives, and it turned out to be the best thing that could ever have happened. 
mm -hmm. it brought us to a new life and it, it brought both of us to science of mind actually oh. um, along the way so it was uh it was really fun talking about it thanks that's all i have to say oh thank you uh let's see any other hand uh I see Dr. Judith waving her hand. <laughs> okay, I can't, see, I can't see everybody. I have to go on gallery, I guess. Okay. Um, okay, there we go. I, uh, both my partner and I talked about situations where we had to leave our locations. Uh, and it was initially very stressful and not being able to clearly see how it would turn into something wonderful. And uh, I, mo I moved a lot. I only moved from the third floor down to a, uh, a new apartment that my landlord made for me. I was gonna have to move out from the third floor and he created a, an apartment downstairs. So it wasn't a very long move but I'd been living up there for probably around 30 years. <laughs> so it was, it was a dramatic oh. thing anyway. And, and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then the spirit provided in the form of my, my landlords, they did this wonderful thing of creating a new space on the ground floor. So that was, uh, it was a, it wasn't a long move, do you know what I mean? From third floor mm -hmm. way down to the bottom, a brand new place mm -hmm. on the bottom floor. <laughs> but it was in my heart, in my spirit, it was a very um, powerful thing that had to take place. And I began by in anxiety and I ended up in total gratitude for what the outcome was. So Great. that was, yeah. So accepting came into that because they are so linked as accepting the exact yeah. the way it is, but it didn't matter how far you've been in. I know <laughs> it's so used to your apartment for so long. It's, it's a big, big change. So yeah, good for you for getting to acceptance in that and for your landlords to help you. I figure they're, they're one of my, prosperity gifts having be able to live in, in this place mm -hmm. for so long it's that's how i see the prosperity in my mm -hmm. life has worked out wonderful thank you for sharing that we anybody see, else we see reverend carolyn with the oh reverend hey. carolyn hi reverend carolyn carolyn right. yes thank you so much for this opportunity and you know i am always grateful to be able to participate in a Thanksgiving Eve service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from the time of my growing up. My partner and I had maybe a little different situation, but what was learned was the same thing. Sometimes the negative part of what's going on mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of judging it as being really, really bad or going to that place of judgment, it's as you mentioned just a moment ago, accepting what it is. Part of what I've been doing lately is really getting into Emma Curtis Hopkins. And she reminds us that even when we may experience these things that appear to be bad, Mm -hmm. Not to judge it because, you know, down the line, you can actually see, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm so happy that this thing came about. That circumstance was there because you learn through it. You can mm -hmm. grow through it. And it really blesses your life for you to be in a different space. So those are just my words. My partner can speak for itself. But that's what I'm really grateful for is not to wallow in mm -hmm. that place of woe is me. <laughs> right. Beautiful. Yes. And that requires accepting exactly 
it does what you're wallowing in so to speak <laughs> yes. thank you so much carol reverend carol thank you anybody else christopher christopher okay oh. well i'm i'm one of those people that wallowed in uh, in my pain and suffering mm -hmm. and for about 15 years i was looking for a cure for my chronic back pain and would try everything and it finally after opening every single door it seemed like it, it it got to the point where it looks like I'm going to be living with this. And that was the point of accepting that I wasn't going to get better. Mm. And then upon accepting that I wasn't going to get better, guess what happened? You got that. I started getting yeah. better. I gave up the fight. I put down my sword. I said, I'm going to have to live with this. I'm going to have to make friends with this. I can't fight it anymore. And so, you know, looking back now, I'm going, wow, that was a brutal lesson, brutal lesson, and it took me to my knees. And um, what I've learned from it is that I have so much empathy for people in pain, um, because I, I know, and I, I know the psychological and the physical aspects of it. Um, but the acceptance piece was the piece that I wasn't able to get my hands around. And it's not something that I could, you can, that, that I can actually, actually did. It was like, it was a surrender. I give up, I can't do it anymore. It wasn't like, oh, I think I'm gonna tiptoe through the tulips and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, you know, accept this. No, <laughs> no way, I don't accept this. And for 15 years, I'm fighting this, but. There came a time when I was worn down and I just gave up. And that was, that was the point. That was the point. Acceptance as the path to gratitude. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I can't add to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that. <laughs> yes. No, and it is amazing what, when, we truly, truly accept something that whatever is going on seems to dissipate or get better or something. And so that's, that's the beauty of it. So I wanted to uh, have you think about from what you talked about now that you know what you know, um, and even perhaps thinking of another situation that you were a little bit fighting about, what would you do different to help yourself get to that place of acceptance or what might be a different way that you would be in that situation? For me, I know that if I have, if I break some other bone, I, I just know what it takes for it to heal. And I wouldn't be fighting that like I did. Um, so now that we've had our own experience and our partner's experiences, just, and let's, uh, again, you'll have a wonderful partner to talk about and uh, with, and it might be a different situation, seen from a new viewpoint of how acceptance is totally connected with being able to be grateful um, and to see the gift in the situation. Good. So, um, Peter, can you break us up into uh, our second um, breakout rooms? Okay. Got it. Here Please. we go. Off we go. We are back. And timing wise, uh, I do want to get a few shares for whoever would like to share from there, uh, maybe two or three people. And then I, I shared one of my learnings and I have two others I wanted to share with you. So who would like to share about what came up this time with their wonderful partner? Again, raise your hand or use raise your, your hand. questions to raise your hand. Raise your hand on the camera. We see Sherston. Kirsten. Kirsten, yeah. Unmute and go ahead. You got to unmute yourself, honey. Right. Thank you. And um, 
Yeah, my name is Swedish and it looks like Kirsten, but it's pronounced Shashtin. And I, I'll start uh, spelling it phonetically. But anyway, I'm going to have to leave pretty soon. I have another appointment. Mm -hmm. But Reverend Jerry, hi. And it's amazing. Your name has come up a couple of times today. And in our last share, uh, we both shared about you, which I thought was really sweet. So uh, it was great. And um, yeah, it's just, I'm, I know I'm in the right place at the right time and um, things just keep getting better. And, um, and I met somebody new tonight, um, Eileen or Eileen, I think it's Eileen. Anyway, that was wonderful. I haven't met her in person yet, but one more person to look forward to meeting. And um, yeah, I'm just having a great time. So, well, thank you. Wonderful. Shashkin. Shash, phonetically, S H A S H T I N. Shashtin. Shashtin. Yeah, nice. think of Mount Shasta with okay. a tin on it. Shash tin. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I really thank appreciate you. that. Thank you, Reverend Jerry. Okay. And I've Any got more? to go. So bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. So one more. <clears throat> time for one more share. If there's somebody you'd like to share. <clears throat> Excuse me. Susan. Oh, yeah. Reverend, it's Reverend Jerry. Jerry. I have a lot to share, and there's no time for it all, but it was fabulous. I want to share two words, trust and surrender. Mm -hmm. and, oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I was going to mention the surrender for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so in wrapping up, I promise I would do uh, two more of my learning. Some of them have already come up in our discussion. And the first one is you don't miss it until it's gone. So we already covered that one. And it's I finally decided since I wasn't accepting things very well, that acceptance is what it is that makes things uh, become a gift. Because when you are accepting, you're also doing a let go of having it be the way you want it to be. And that took me a while to get there. And um, and it just simply works better because I was so busy arguing with myself at night, I didn't get much sleep. So accepting as now is, of course, it's wonderful I have my cast off, but one other little thing to mention is look in your life to see if you actually have a virtual cast, a cast that's stopping you from doing something either that you want to accept or something that has been on your heart, but you don't think you can do it and you can just get rid of that it, once you realize that and surrender and accept that hey maybe I can try that so um, and then the third thing I learned is there's a gift of simply letting go mm -hmm. and we have no most of us know what that means and that's the hardest thing to do when we're hanging on to our way of thinking about something. So, um, so that's, the gift is in letting go. <clears throat> and that's where wisdom comes in. Curiosity comes in to figure out what's going on. Acceptance comes in to get to gratitude and gratitude takes us to letting go. And that's where the gifts are recognized by us. The gifts are always there, but we may not see them clearly until we let it go and see what's right in front of us or feel it. So I wanna thank you all for being here tonight. And um, I'm just gonna close this out, given our time with a prayer. Can you hold that? thought for just sure. a second, Susan, hold the prayer, hold it, resist. hold it. I didn't have my little, I didn't right. have my you little resisted. sheet. 
Go resistance has some place in our lives. So I'm going to resist that for just a second because I want to thank you first. Let's all oh, show okay. this at our appreciation. Oh, yay. More thank than you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We got a few announcements and then we're and 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 we're going to go through those. We need to read our covenant so we know oh, we're yeah. going to go a little bit over. And then Susan, you'll seal that covenant with a um, prayer for us. Okay. So with that in mind, what's coming up? What's happening, family, church family? Well, let me tell you. On Sunday, November 28th, Reverend Savannah Riker will be speaking on appreciating the journey. So join us physically and in person in the sanctuary or watch the service live on live stream or YouTube this coming Sunday. Service starts at 1030. Please know that if you're joining us on Sunday in person, we're still wearing masks inside all of our buildings and we will be practicing social distancing to remain as safe and secure as we have been since we reopened. Next Wednesday, December 1st, practitioner Judith Roberts will be speaking on surrender in action and kicking off our December theme of the journey of Bikim. <laughs> Take two, the journey of becoming. That's our theme for mm. December. Meditation is at 6.30 and services at 7. And our Wednesday services, since they're working so well in Zoom, are going to stay in Zoom for a while. Plaid weekend, what is that? Its tradition is going to continue. That's the small, small business version of Black Friday, Plaid weekend, where all of our small businesses in the Bay Area um, have special 30% off or in sales for Christmas. Our Spirit Treasure Bookstore will be open this Friday and Saturday, November 26 and 27 from 10 till three and Sunday after service. Now we've been meeting in the courtyard and, and in the back of the sanctuary. We will be back in for this event in the bookstore. So therefore, out of safety reasons, entrance at, in the bookstore will be limited to two people at a time. But with 30% off everything in the store, this is your holiday shopping central. Get something there that you can't get. If you got a person that has everything, you need to shop at the bookstore. You'll find something for them. They won't have everything that's in there. All proceeds from the used book table will be donated to the Oakland Public School Teacher Supply Fund. We are having a holiday dinner on Saturday, December 18th, starting at 3 p.m., and it will go until 6 p.m. Deb Santa Maria will be playing holiday music as a gift from the practitioners. The food will be catered for COVID safety, and we will require proof of vaccination since it will be indoors without masks. If you're interested in attending or would like to volunteer, please join us. Now, if you're going to attend and because it is a catered event, pre-registration is a must. You can register online on the events page or in the village news when you receive it, or you can sign up at church in person on Sunday with Herbert McMurray, who's one of the founders of this event. A love donation will be gratefully accepted. Join the other holiday elves on Thursday, December 2nd at 1030 to decorate the sanctuary and social hall for the upcoming holidays. For more information, contact Zodemuro at gmail.com. It's Board of Trustees application time. Mm -hmm. Have you been a member in good standing for two years? And have you been thinking about serving the village in a new way? The nominations committee is looking for qualified candidates to run for the board of trustees at the annual meeting on March 4th. Applications are due to Deborah Jackson by December 31st. To check out the qualifications and responsibilities, download the application on the homepage of the website or from the village news, or you can pick up a copy on Sunday. It's teen camp time in the middle of winter. Can you believe it? But it's true. 
The Centers for Spiritual Living Teen Camp Leaders are excited to announce our virtual Winter Camp 2022. The virtual event is happening January 14th to January 16th with the theme of Make Room to Bloom. Registration is open until December 15th. Find the link and information on the events page. So let's take a few minutes to read the new minister covenant together. Join me as we say, and I need to move it over. There is only one life. life. This life is good. good. This life is God. This life is is my life life now. now. In knowing that I am one one with with this life. life, that is God. I therefore know that I am one with all of the expressions, expressions, which includes the presence of a new minister for my beloved community. Because I know that the highest purpose of my new minister is to reveal spirit, I therefore know that my new minister is a revelation of God as wisdom. I further know that my new minister is the fulfillment of that which has been promised by spirit. For it is written, I am filled with divine wisdom. I allow divine mind to fill my mind now. Ayang man ansant. As I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister revealed before me as unity in community. I now intend to experience my new minister in full cooperation and agreement with my community, knowing this truth about myself for, I am inspiring unity and diversity, embracing and nourishing our community. I am awakening the wisdom within. I am healing and expanding our community with the power of love. I am engaging the community and building a world that works for everyone. I am deepening family consciousness. As I now accept this highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they are revealed in a way that illumines spirit and serves the highest and greatest good of all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful God is gracious. And so it is. Ashe. And one little side note, thank you so much for reading along that with us. We're also have, we have also reintroduced the in-person meditation at the Sunday service. So at Sunday from 10 to 1020, we will have silent meditation in the sanctuary. As always, for information on all that is going on at your Oakland Center, please visit our website at www.oaklandcsl.org. So let's just take a moment and recognize the gifts that we have by talking and saying our affirmation. Grateful. This gift I give give is God God in action. action. It does 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 good work in the world. And bless bless creation. Exactly. So if you have a gift to give at the center, I pass my digital collection bowl from Mm. uh, frame to frame to frame around and you can put your imaginary but real (laughs) financial donation into that bowl. And then you can follow it up in the real universe by going to the homepage and press the donate button with the credit card, or you can mail it to the address shown there. You can text it if you're a real hipster, like Lucia Baker is, I'm not as hip as him, so I still donate on the other button, 510-327-3431. Or you can use Zelle at giving at oaklandcsl.org. And the last way that you can also do it is come to service. We have offering baskets willing to receive your gift. So I'm so grateful. I bless this offering. I thank you because I know when you put it in these gates, it goes back out into the world 
and it returns to you in multitude. So in great gratitude, I'm thankful. And I'm also thankful for Christopher Brown, practitioner Christopher Brown. What would we do without him? He did a lovely meditation at the beginning. I'm grateful for <laughs> Reverend Carolyn being here tonight and our Rev Reverend Jerry. I wanna thank you both for shining your light upon us. I wanna thank the Zoom team that works so hard behind the scene to make this all happen. They make me look good and they make me sound good. And that, my friends, <laughs> is a miracle, okay? So I wanna thank Peter and Alice and Luis in the background. They do such great work and we bless them and thank them as always. And I bless you and thank you for being here so much for sharing your pre-Thanksgiving Eve with us. And Susan, you were just as wonderful as you always are. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Susan and ask her to close us out in prayer. Mm. Thank you, Paul. And so just taking that breath, that breath that is that very present moment filled with, with the joy and the thanksgiving of this special uh, Thanksgiving Eve and for the wonderful and beautiful sharing that we've had this evening in our service today. And for our beautiful center, for Reverend Jerry, for everyone who makes all the things happen with heart, with grace, and with joy at Oakland Center, and as they are in the world shining their light. So I am just simply grateful. I feel blessed. And I know that each person is, is sharing themselves in a most beautiful way in their life, shining their light and bringing joy and peace and grace to the world. So in gratitude, I simply say, and please join with me in saying, and, and so, so it is. is. Amen. Bless you. Mm.